This is Andrew for The Chosen Prime with a quick video preview of some production samples from KFC Toys. This is their Evan Metal 6A and 6B Crash Hog and Dump Yard. This is uh, otherwise known as their take on a Masterpiece scale Wreck Gar as well as a Junkion. I wanted to start off here by showing that you can uh, have them uh, ride the other one when they are in vehicle modes. You can see that it looks quite nice and there's actually a lot of different uh, options between the two of them. You can kind of build these guys however you want, but they are able to be posed uh, riding one another. So let's take a look at some uh, robot mode detail here for uh, Retgar. Take a look at some of the detail here on this pre-production sample of Crash Hog. You can see that at really at a first glance you can definitely tell this masterpiece um, version of Retgar. He's got all the right hallmarks, his beard, his little chest guns, the spiked wheels, pretty clean backpack, um, good coloring. And you know, his legs look good. As far as these wheels are concerned, they are just, uh, they peg on. And if you look, there are kind of pegs throughout the figure. There's these pegs. If I move this little spike here, there's a peg hole here. Remove the upper wheel here. You can see there's peg holes all throughout the figure and even on the underside of the arm here. And so you can put, you can put the wheels kind of wherever you want. If you want them on his lower arm, if you want them on his shoulder, you can kind of put them wherever you want. You can see that they still roll quite well. The wheels are made out of rubber, and these little spikes are, are made of harder rubber too. Um, they don't really roll on the ground, but it, these won't. Uh, these spikes don't feel like they're going to bend too much. But they're a really nice, uh, solid, uh, spinning spiked wheel. As far as the accessories that came with this sample, which are, I believe, are what their final one will have. He does come with these little rubber uh, spikes. And they're meant to uh, any of the same ports that we install the wheels into. You can peg these uh, little spikes into to uh, modulate the original kind of cartoon model. You can see you put them in his kneecaps and they just they pull in, pull out, and you can put them kind of wherever you want, uh, any of these same ports. He did come with the two wheels. Additionally, he came with the uh, parts to make his axe here. And this section here is actually the spokes of the uh, motorcycle, which I'll show off when we transform him. He comes with uh, three guns. Uh, they're all kind of uh, nice detailed guns. They all have the center kind of peg slot in each of the guns as, uh, as well as some paint detail. They also have uh, circular pegs so you can stow them, you know, any, anywhere those ports for the wheels were, either his backpack, his shoulder, his legs, it's up to you. He comes with uh, the little mini TV that he had from the movie that he showed off and talked to uh, Rodimus with. And it's got some paint detail here um, and he can hold it. And then the satchels here on his sides, both of them just have a flap here that folds up when you press it and you can stow the TV in there just like he did, he had in the, uh, in the cartoon. The final little accessory that Crash Shog comes with is the drum that he kind of banged in the movie. It's like this kind of little fridge thing. He can hold it in his hand. He's got the standard kind of pawn, uh, slot in his hand to be able to hold the, the thing. And then you can, you can just take apart the uh, ax here to make the kind of the hammer that he used. You can disassemble it. And this actually does have a port that you can open up and store some accessories if you wanted to. It's up, it's up to you if, what you want to do there. As far as uh, actual detail here, his head can rotate as well as tilt up and down. The beard pieces here are a soft uh, rubber, so they move out of the way. How you pose it? His little kind of ear spires here, antennas can uh, fold back. And it's due to transformation. He's got uh, ratcheted arms, a soft detent kind of ratchet for lifting it, uh, bicep swivel at this point. He's got double jointed elbows, his hands, our kind of standard KFC hands with individually uh, kind of jointed uh, digits as well as they can rotate. These are kind of an improvement to some previous uh, hands, but you can get some uh, kind of wicked uh, poses out of them. They're uh, very emotive and quite cool. He's got a ratcheting waist. Again, he's got these little satchels that are on uh, kind of joints here. They are, you can't pop them off if you wanted to, but they can rotate and kind of get out of the way. You move these hip skirts out of the way and you can, uh, Ratchet up his, his leg, as well as bend his knee, that's ratcheted. He's got ankle articulation, and the toe can move forward and back, and he's also got a heel piece here in the back. The back 
kind of uh, part here, this kind of skirt or whatever can uh, is on a ball joint they can move out of the way when you need he's riding or you need to pose him. And he's got a kind of universal hips that can go outwards. As far as weight, there's a lot of die cast in this figure. Kind of all these shiny parts here in his legs, his feet, um, parts of these shins. He's a very, very heavy, well-built figure um, overall. Um, very uh, sturdy. Um, unfortunately, due to not having instructions, I did add a stress mark here when I tried to transform it. And this is, I'll, I'll make a note of it when I transform it, but you want to make sure that you lift up on this panel before you fold the leg forward or else you might uh, possibly stress it like I did there. But it's still holding together just fine, just something to be careful of and you know, pay attention to the instructions um, when you transform him. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll take a look at some of the details for uh, his uh, compatriot uh, dump yard. Take a look at some detail here on dump yard. You can see that he's roughly the same kind of uh, overall design as Crash Hog, but he does have his own unique head with his own little uh, unique take on the horns. Uh, different chest with chromed pipes, um, slightly different lower legs than what Rekgar had. Um, the arms and stuff are the same, different colors. He does come with accessories that are different, like these uh, these kind of shield pieces. Like he's got this shield, which these are rubber um, horns and spikes. And the same thing for the shoulder pads. These shoulder pads are just pegged in. And then he comes with this little gun um, kind of armament that is both in vehicle mode as well as robot mode. Same kind of thing, we have multiple ports for any, all of this stuff, the weapons, the wheels, it's up to you um, where you want to kind of put everything. He does come with one of his uh, weapons, he comes with this, this kind of saw blade slash sword. And he also comes with his own set of different, slightly different guns, he comes with two guns. And he also comes with the, uh, the spokes or the fork to make uh, some other weapons, but no uh, axe blade as far as I can tell. But same kind of posability. Um, overall, here for Dump Yard, but just slightly different detail to kind of make your Junkions uh, look a little bit more unique. And here's Crash Hog and Dump Yard side by side. Again, slightly different legs, overall different paint, uh, different chest details, and then different accessories. But even, you know, with just a slight change of accessories, they look uh, different enough and part of the same um, overall team across both of them. Um, Dump Yard's got these kind of faux wheels here. Um, in his legs if you don't want to install the, the the real wheels on the side. So yeah, a little bit more different detail. Um, no uh, hip hip pockets or anything like that. They are interchangeable and a lot of parts are. So like for instance, you can just pop off an arm at this port right here and you can switch out um, either arm between the two. It's kind of just as simple as that if you want to have a different uh, overall kind of arm. And then these uh, shoulder pads and all these weapons, again, you can kind of just mix and match um, how you want to uh, set them up between the two of them. Furthermore, if you want to, you can actually switch out the torsos because the legs are essentially the only part that's kind of always, you got to have a set of torsos the same. So lift up on these two pieces here, flip these two parts out here, and then you actually can pull off this entire uh, front piece here and you can switch them and if, uh, KFC ends up making uh, more kind of fronts, you can kind of see how easily you can kind of make an entire troop of Junkions to kind of fit on your Mespi shelf. It's really cool that they did this and you can, that you can have all these different options as far as uh, setting up um, these guys um, um, however you like. It's just a nice little bonus that they've uh, given us here for uh, Crash Hog and Dump Yard. I'm going to show off Crash Hog's transformation from robot to bike mode because it's the kind of the more complicated route to take. To begin, remove both tires and set them aside. And then the most complicated part is the Rekgar's backpack here. So we unpeg it from his back and you can see the steering column kind of hiding there in his backpack. And it's on this double hinge. So we want to hinge it out like this and then take the handlebars and rotate them around on this pin and then bring this back down the double hinge. This panel here will lift up and you want to lift it up so that you can feed the handlebars through it. And it's a bit tricky. You may need to kind of bend that hinge in uh, a specific way in order to kind of get it to have clearance, but you want to make it so that you have a nice, kind of rotate it this way, a nice hole to be able to then feed this piece out and in. 
And there is the uh, handlebars, kind of free. Remove all these little rubber spikes from his elbows and his knees. It just make your life a lot easier to transform him. The head, take these little spires and rotate them to the back of the head. Lift up on these panels, which will free not only the arms, but as well as the head, and the head will hinge back into his torso, and the beard will be uh, secure in that spot. Come to one of the arms and rotate it 180 degrees, and you can see there's a divot here on this side of the arm, and we want to use that double joint to have it kind of have this piece sandwiched into the hand here. Let's flip the fist, and then rotate the arm so that this arm is now kind of perpendicular to the body. And we want to hinge it inward and then collapse down the chest panel here, locking the arm kind of into place. And this arm is now ready for uh, vehicle mode. So we will rotate at the bicep, use the double joint to fold it in, ball up the fist, ratchet it a couple pieces, and then hinge it inwards. And then this will lock the arm into place. And we've got the arms good to go. Before we move to the lower torso, you see these little panels here next to the feet, the fists. You want to lift, rotate these out. It's easier to do before you get to this part, but you can see there's this little peg that flips out um, by the hand. And you want to make sure that you have that um, available on both hands here um, before you fold the legs in, because the legs, the feet, will actually peg into these panels on the uh, hands here. So just again, make sure that those uh, pieces are ready to go. Come down to the torso, kind of split his legs and you can see that there's some tabs here that you can lift up on and remove, lift up and unpeg this uh, cross piece, fold it forward. And you want these leg panels, these uh, kind of hip panels, hip skirts to fold flat against the body, but you want this piece kind of pointing downward. And we'll eventually get to the point where it'll, that, this peg here will match the peg hole in the leg here once we kind of fold the legs up. And then before you go ahead and rotate the legs in, you want to make sure that you move these panels here upwards or else you'll, get a, you'll have it be stressed. So push at the top of this panel to lift it up, extend the leg, rotate it all forward, and then there's a tab on that panel that matches on the leg. And then you can see where we're getting closer to have this peg uh, match this peg hole. Come to the foot, fold in the heel spur, flatten out the toe, and rotate it. Rotate the leg down enough so that now we can see where this is going to peg into the leg like that. And then that peg on the arm, there's a peg hole on the foot that this will sandwich into. And that's one side um, ready to go. Before we do the other leg, we want to take one of the wheels and this peg hole that's on the port that's on the inside of the, the leg, you want to go ahead and put it in the wheel. And now we can go ahead and finish off the other leg. So extend it, rotate it around, heel spur, toe, rotate, bend the leg down enough to then we can pe peg in the wheel into that part of the knee. Make sure that the crotch piece here pegs into the leg. And it'll sandwich together. There's actually another peg in the legs to hold them together. And then finally come to the foot and make sure that that hand uh, flap pegs in to each one of those. These little satchels can rotate. The seat. So the seats, um, you want to split it. It'll actually, the pegs in um, up the front here. But you got to kind of be careful as you're uh, rotating. You want to rotate them down to the sides, but you kind of want to angle it enough so that you can kind of just slowly kind of hinge it around um, to the side, otherwise it'll pop up the ball joint, which is no big deal if you want to do that, but um, you can if you just kind of, if you're, if you're patient rotating this down like, like that, you can get it without uh, uh, having it uh, fall. And then these uh, kind of seat panels just peg in into the back of the legs. Come to the steering column slash gas tank. The handlebars will split across, which will let you now sandwich down. And there's two pegs on the kind of glass portion that peg into the top of the bike. And then there's two tabs on the uh, gas tank that peg into the body. 
At this point, you have two different options of how you want the front wheel to be installed. One of the default ways is you can just take the wheel and these two peg holes in the legs, or the arms here, just sandwich the wheel in. And then you get the wheel in the front here. It's more of a, sh more of a street bike kind of look um, versus the long neck um, option. If you do want the long neck option, just go ahead and unpeg the wheel. And then grab his uh, axe weapon, unplug the blade, and then here's the two uh, pieces of the fork. There are springs here and it does kind of work as suspension, but it's more for show than anything else. But take the wheel and then peg in the uh, arms into the sides. And I do recommend kind of making sure that when you peg it together that you still have, you can still spin um, between the two. So just make sure you don't push these in all the way. Come to the forks here and you want to rotate in the small little arms here. And you can see that there's matching pegs and peg holes on top here. So when we come to the bottom, the butt front of the bike, you can see the same thing where these, there's four pegs and peg holes to kind of match up. So just make sure that you uh, kind of plug these all into the right spots. And it might be tricky the very first time. And then we, there we got uh, Crash Hog in his uh, long forked um, bike mode. You can see the wheels do spin. So let's take a look at some of uh, his uh, bike mode detail. Take a look at some vehicle detail here for Crash Hog. You can see that it's a very nice Mass V style update of the Rekgar character. It's a very striking looking bike um, from all his colors. His wheels do freely roll. The fork in the front can rotate side to side um, on a little hinge here. If you'd like, you can with all the different peg holes kind of across him, you can peg in things like the axe blade or his guns or additionally, if you want to, you can take the little spikes, the little rubber spikes, and they will plug into these holes as well. So you can kind of kit him out as ever you like. And it's just a nice looking uh, sturdy bike. He does uh, stand just fine on his own due to how he's kind of flat with the wheels, but he also comes with a pair of kickstands to help hold them up if you so choose. Just a really, really nice looking version of uh, Rekgar here. So let's take a look at some comparisons between him and Dumpyard. And to briefly go over some of the differences here for Dumpyard and his bike mode, uh, the colors, of course, a little bit different, a little bit of chrome here because of the chest. The uh, shoulder pads from Dumpyard here peg in onto the back here. You get this little kind of uh, Ariel thing that rotates that fits on the back side. The shoulder, the arm panels just peg into the side on both sides. Just in, you know, it just kind of pegs into this uh, side of the leg and the same thing for this. And so the same uh, overall kind of look, you just get some different accessories here for Dumpyard. Vehicle mode comparisons between Crash Hog and Dumpyard. You can see that they look roughly the same in both modes, just slight color differences. I do have Dumpyard set up here with the uh, forkless version of the front. Uh, Crash Hog's got little, his little chest guns, um, he's got his little satchels, whereas Dumpyard's got his shoulder pads as well as his arm, arm guards. Some colors, some leg details a little bit different. But, uh, and again, you can kind of swap pieces between the two of them, arms and, and chest and stuff like that if you wanted to even mix them up even further. I will make a note that only one of my samples here has uh, the uh, mirrors and the bricks. And I believe that when the final production comes out, you'll get both. Both uh, sets will have uh, mirrors as well as the bricks. Robo Mo comparisons with other movie characters as well as season three. So of course we've got Crash Hog here as Rekgar. We've got Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. We've got KFC's version of Blaster Transistor. And then we have two different versions of Hot Rod. We have the original MP09 version of Hot Rod here. And then we also have the MP28 version of uh, Rodimus that just came out recently. If you look at scale charts, for sure, Rekgar here matches the scale for Ultra Magnus and, and Blaster. And then depending on which version of Hot Rod you prefer, this is more of that Rodimus, uh, Rodimus Prime kind of size of character compared to Crash Hog. And if you actually look at some of the seats, Hot Rod is supposed to be shorter than Rekgar. Rekgar is almost a kind of a Springer sized uh, character compared to this version of Hot Rod. So he does work um, to match the scale of your uh, Transformers here, your Masterpiece figures here, when you look at compared to other season three and movie figures. And you know, depending on which version of Hot Rod you want to use, he still fits. Uh, both, in my opinion, here in their uh, robot modes. Vehicle mode comparisons. Here we've got MP28, Crash Hog, MP09, and then Ultra Magnus. 
One thing to remember is that Crush Hog is designed to transport other bots versus humans like the Rodimuses or Ultra Magnus, so that's why he's so much larger in his vehicle mode. But I think once you kind of add it all together in that fact, as well as how he scaled within robot mode, Crash Hog kind of fits whatever version of scale you want for your uh, season three slash movie masterpiece Autobots. I think Crash Hog works here in bike mode compared to either version of Rodimus. Here I'll briefly show off how both Crash Hog and Dump Yard are scaled to have bots riding them. Uh, for example, here's a Hot Rodimus MP28. I'm riding him quite comfortably and in a good scale here as a bot rider for them in their motorcycle modes. And to me, that's why I think I prefer uh, that these guys match best with MP28 as far as uh, bot modes. And so KFC's done a good job here making good uh, masterpiece scale junkions. Some final thoughts here on Keys Fantasy Club, Heavy Metal, 6A and 6B, Crash Hog and Dumpyard, or their take on a masterpiece Rekgar and Junkion. Uh, they are quite a step up um, from the company as far as how they've uh, completed um, even these production samples. They're much better quality than some of their recent releases. The plastic, the paint, the joint tolerances, the weight doesn't feel floppy. Um, they've taken their time with the production cycle on this figure, it seems like, and then you have a whole lot of options as far as posability with the different accessories, the wheels, where you can kind of mix and match, the way that they can ride each other. It's just kind of a bunch of fun uh, bits and pieces here on their version of Rekgar and uh, the Junkie on here. They're just uh, kind of great masterpiece figures. As far as availability, um, both figures are available from Chosen Prime. You either get Crash Hog by himself, Dump, dump Yard by himself, or you can actually get both two of them in a set and you'll save a little bit of money. Um, they're due to come out in July. If you like what you've seen here, um, I would say you could trust uh, KFC this time with the quality of these figures. They're uh, excellent toys. And so I'll talk to you later, so take care.